Welcome to the Friday Casebook. I'm Lina, a freelance journalist and moderator, and together with Roger Casale, the founder of New Europeans, a pro-European civil rights organization, we will find out everything about the latest events in the world. Hi, Roger. Hi, Lina. How are you doing? Good. I'm curious. What happened this week? Well, I've, I've got a question for you this week, Lena. Uh, do you know the expression, an elephant in the room? Yes, I do know the expression. It's the same in German. <laughs> I mean, look at the damage an elephant in the room does. You know, it's something uh, obvious uh, uh, that we don't want to talk about, but it's there and it makes us feel very uncomfortable. And so uh, this week, I think the elephant in the room in terms of news is... Uh, our old friend, in inverted commas, Donald J. Trump. And there he is at the CPAC conference, the uh, Conservative Political Action Committee uh, in Orlando, not in Cancun, as some people might have thought, in Orlando. And remember, it was last year, this time last year, when Trump and Pence were saying that they had 15 cases of uh, COVID and that was going down to zero and it just would melt like the snow and go away like a miracle and here we are uh, one year later and very sadly 500,000 Americans have lost their lives and Donald Trump has lost his job and so uh, his supporters now are coming to terms with the idea that the J in Donald J Trump doesn't stand for genius as they previously told us Uh, but in fact, it stands for jobless. But at least they put up a statue for him made of uh, gold. It reminds me a lot, actually, of the design of the balloon that was flown over London of Donald Trump when he came to London. But whereas the uh, balloon has a nappy and a safety pin, the gold statue of Trump Uh, has him holding a wand and wearing flip-flops. I think we should ask our listeners to write in on a postcard and tell us why they think Donald Trump's golden statue is carrying a wand and flip-flops. That seems absolutely bizarre. But it hasn't stopped his supporters having a photograph with him. Uh, whether they're QAnon or YAnon or PAnon, Uh, of course, uh, they, they, they can't understand what's happened. And he's been repeating all his greatest hits about how the election was stolen and uh, how he didn't really lose and how he's been uh, really, uh, uh, he's a victim in all of this because he's been the victim of a conspiracy. And I call it the CDE uh, Anon conspiracy. C for constitution, American constitution. That did for Donald Trump. Uh, D, democracy, that was another terrible uh, threat to his, 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 his job security. And finally, E for elections. So the CDE uh, uh, Anon got the better of QAnon, but I don't think we've seen the back of him. And he is an elephant in the room. And we need to understand how you get rid of an elephant in the room and how we stop Donald Trump or something even worse than Donald Trump. Uh, coming back next time and especially coming over here to Europe. What else caught your eye this week? Well, one of the things that stands in the way of uh, unhinged autocrats when they get into power uh, is the rule of law. And on Monday is the closing date for the consultation, the annual consultation that the European Commission does. That's Commissioner Jourova and also Commissioner Reinders uh, into the application of the rule of law in the European Union. So let's have a look at them giving their press conference. There we have the Statue of Justice in the background giving a high five. Uh, we want to give a high five to the rule of law. So fill in the consultation, tick the box that says you're in favor of the rule of law. If you want some more ideas about answers, visit the New Europeans website, but stand up for the rule of law. One person who's been tripped up by the rule of law, of course, is the former president of France. 
I'm afraid, although he's got friends in high places, Mr. Sarkozy, I mean, I know Mr. Albani has been out and about talking about his um, decade-long friendship with Mr. Sarkozy and what a good chat Sarkozy is. He's definitely on the naughty step this week uh, for trying to bribe a judge uh, to stop the judge looking into uh, an inquiry about Mr. Sarkozy's campaign finances. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, he's a little bit in trouble as well and he got a, a shock of his life when he went to court because he wasn't expecting the judge to find him guilty I mean that completely wiped the suntan off his face and he is now appealing but uh, he's got another case coming up next week and let's have a let's have a look at him I think this is on his way in, into court because he still has a smile on his face well, we can't tell for sure because he's wearing a mask, but uh, what's, uh, what you can see behind him is, uh, is the sign it pointing to the naughty step. After this rather dark story, is there someone you would like to highlight in a more positive way? It is a dark story, Lena, that one about South Coast. And I'm glad that you've used that word because if people see former presidents of France not obeying the rule of law, what chance is there to get everybody else to stand up for the rule of law? And remember, tick that box in the commission's consultation. People say, what's the point if we've got, you know, gangsters running countries in, like France? I mean, not saying Sarkozy is a gangster, but that's what a lot of people might think. Um, then why, why, why should we bother? So I think it does undermine the, the fight for the rule of law. But you're right. There are bright spots, too. And there are people who stand up for democracy and human rights and the rule of law, um, not just in the European Union, but outside the European Union. And our star of the week this week is Alexandra Klitina from Ukraine, the former Minister of Infrastructure. Alexandra will be joining us on Monday for uh, the Quo Vadis that we're holding on International Women's Day. And that's going to be a focus on women in leadership positions in East and Central Europe. That's also the theme of International Women's Day this year. And of course, one of the problems, if you manage to get into a leadership position, as Alexandra did in, uh, in Ukraine, when she actually joined the government, there are always going to be people, be people out to get you and out to undermine you. And uh, that's what happened to her. She was the victim of a, a telephone scam where she was recorded making comments about uh, her boss and that she were, which she thought she was making in private uh, and so she was thrown out of the government but I'm pleased to say she's dusted herself down and she's still got um, uh, ambitions to to do good in the world and uh, we fully support her and we'll be delighted to see her next week. What's coming up next? Well I've already mentioned International Women's Day and we're delighted that we're going to have a, um, a wonderful group of women together talking to us about uh, the challenges that women face in Belarus, in Poland, in East and Central Europe again next week on International Women's Day. One photo that particularly caught my eye this week, Lena, was Svetlana Tsikhanovskaya's visit to uh, Sanin Marin, the Prime Minister of um, Finland, who is also, I believe, uh, the youngest Prime Minister uh, in the European Union. Well, I think we want our politicians to have you know, dignity, to really be able to sort of project a, a, some, some natural authority. And I thought that was a terrific photograph and uh, nice to see the two of them together, both of them wearing, uh, wearing their masks, unlike Donald Trump. And, you know, let's hope this is a sign of, of, of things to come. I mean, we, we, we need to see a new face of leadership in the world, and maybe this is it. Thank you very much, Roger, for this Friday casebook. Like you, I'm looking very much forward to International Women's Day on Monday. What is really interesting and what we also talked about during the last Friday case books um, is that many female activists are on the forefront in, for instance, Belarus, fighting in, in really challenging situations for their rights. So... If you want to support these strong women, if you want to support new Europeans, please don't forget to subscribe to our New Europeans YouTube channel. See you next week. Bye, Roger. Bye, Nina. Bye to our audience. Thank you.